guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and I'm joined in this video by James, a.k.a. the Comic Book Savants, for a discussion about, well, about comic book movies. Are there too many comic book movies? James, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. You and I go way back in the comic book scene. You've been podcasting about comics as the comic book savant for, what, 13 years now? It would be 14 in August, so it's like it's closing down. Oh, it's, wow. It's, it was, yeah, it's a long time, and I've known you most of that time. Yeah, you have. Uh, we were both uh, podcasting around the same time, and, and I think we've both seen the trajectory of comic book movies um, – over the years that they, they became, you know, we loved them. We, we've lapped up every single one that came out. And now all these years later, like comic book movies are mainstream Hollywood. We're always wondering, like, are there too many of them? It, it's, it's our relationship with them seems to have changed over the years. I'll tell the story. I, I remember being podcasting a good 12 years ago and talking about Spider-Man three. And that was the first one that I could remember <clears throat> where I was like, I don't, I don't think I love this movie. How do, how do I feel about this movie? Um, and that was so early in yeah. the, in the cycle. And so do you like, can you think of something like that? Or do you remember that time? I remember doing a three hour podcast debating <laughs> about how much I, I disliked the movie. And I actually yeah. went to the movie theater with friends <laughs> Because I was always that comic book friend my friends always wanted to go to the movies with. So I saw that movie, though I despised it. I saw it like three times in the movie theater because I kept going with different groups of friends. And mm -hmm. that, it ended up leading to me doing a two and a half to three hour podcast saying that the movie was horrible, but it was a good movie <laughs> hidden in it. Uh -huh. With the Saiyan Man stuff, and like I really broke it down. It like perplexed yeah. me because <clears throat> Spider Man is one of my favorite characters, and it was just like, how could they make such rubbish, but with a gem in there? And I was like, right. it should have been two movies. Like I went deep into how they could have actually salvaged it and made it a better movie with some changes and and editing. And I, you know, and I watched it enough to know, you know. And then I owned it because mm -hmm. I bought the. Uh, the trilogy on Blu-ray, when that was when Blu-ray was first really a thing, yeah. and I so I watched it and I was like, yes, I can make this a good movie. Like, give me six months and a cast to shoot some extras and some pickups, and we can make it work. Yeah. But this, what they put out, is horrible. Yeah, that yeah. was a that and Thor were the two, um, because I remember I I did a review on it and I wasn't crazy the first time I watched Thor on Tom Hiddleston, and I re I got burned on the internet because I was like. <laughs> That's like he's what everybody loves. Loki, right. And I was like, he's not my Loki from the comic books. Exactly. He's kind of, but not quite it. Oh, I got it bad on the internet. I Basically. bet you did, man. Like, yeah. That's like Tom Hiddleston is everybody's favorite. He's like, oh, yeah. Brie included. Brie loves Tom Hiddleston. She says she loves Loki, but I think she loves Tom like, Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with my wife. I, you know, and I feel like... um. I, I rewatched it. It was just off the initial going to the theater scene yeah. and doing the review. Then when it, when it came out on home video, I appreciated the performance and he, he totally grew into the role yeah. over as he did more performances, of course. They were trying to figure it out, too. Is where that, that line between mischief and just being an outright bad right. guy. Right. And then, too, he originally tried out for Thor. But they they to the point to the point like they they did a um maybe it was on the the DVD or Blu-ray re release they showed um or they talked about it some sort where like he was trying out or him running lines at store uh -huh. and they just were like no that's not gonna work boom they changed him over to Loki and then they cast um Chris Hemsworth. Well, it's just interesting though to think about where we've come from and like when we as fans as the 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 geek community the comic book fan the comic book movie community where, where there was a time when it was just like when you got one it became priority number one it was like opening day if it had a midnight opening we were there midnight opening because it was this thing that we loved and it had it had achieved this theatrical release and so you had to support it but now i know both of us have gotten to this point there's so many of these movies one it's like a full-time job trying to keep up two there are some of these that come out that I think that people are just skipping entirely. Um, hell, I'm, I'm going to say Hellboy. The new yes. Hellboy is one of those that I think people were like, well, we didn't ask for that. So I don't think At we're going to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, if there was going to have been another Hellboy movie, I think everybody wanted to see what Ron Perlman would have done. 
finishing out that trilogy and then the studio is like well no here's this other thing that we're going to give you and people are like i don't want that right um and just with what's happening with warner brothers and the dc what is the dc eu is that what we're supposed to call it i can't keep it straight (laughs) <laughs> they, well, no, they changed it to, what is it, the universes of DC, because now with the Joker thing, those are supposed to be yeah. Elseworld films uh-huh. that are, are not attached to what are said or thought to be the DCEU before. Yeah. And even though they said that, even though Shazam was supposed to be a part of that, but it's not because they uh-huh. had Superman at the end of the movie. <laughs> it's a mess. Be, it is a hot mess. And they 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 have announced about what 27 i did a podcast yeah, you did. uh six seven months ago or something like that where and i counted them all and they've announced more since then and it was like um we we haven't had any updates on cyborg that was a movie that was announced mm-hmm. we still don't know if the flash movie's ever gonna happen yeah um, so we did get an update a couple of weeks ago that um new new gods tom king is being brought over to uh help with the script on that that won't um, happen I don't think that's all these announcements mean nothing right, because exactly. they announce these things and then nothing happens. Yeah. And with, so. with what's going on with Tom King behind the scenes, like they're cutting his book run short, the backlash against the, the his PTSD storyline, like that's not going to happen. All it takes is like one public outcry and people Warner Brothers is like, oh, oh, OK, never mind. We'll do so. We'll, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's so reactionary. Exactly. And I feel like they kill their own momentum. Yeah. You know, like, OK, like with Shazam, they didn't make it, the numbers that they might have expected. It wasn't the best movie, but it was a solid enough movie. And they did a great job of world building. And now Zachary Levi, you know, he's getting interviewed. and He's like, you know, when's work going to start on a second one? He's like, you got to ask my bosses at DC Films. I I have no idea. And I'm like, I thought it was good enough to them proceed. And it made enough money to proceed with a sequel. And I feel like, OK, because people weren't you know, um, didn't react to it like Wonder Woman or Aquaman. Now they're like, we don't want another Justice League situation, so we're just going to, you know, step away from it. Then you shouldn't have took the time in a movie to build the world in such a good way if you're not going to yeah. continue on. Because even though I didn't love the movie, I liked it a lot, and I liked the world they built, and I want to see yes. more of it. So yeah. I like it. It makes it frustrating as a fan there as well, is that, you know, if you're not going to be consistent – but I think to go back a little bit further to what you said, when everything changed, things changed where that shirt you're wearing when when Batman 89 came out. It was an event. Everybody yes. went to go see that movie. It was a a blockbuster of all, you know, a very big blockbuster. Now, and I think it shifted more to what we have now with the MCU because they consistently were putting out movies like two a year. Now they're about at three a year, roughly. Um, and, and that consistency. So, and they they made they made a blueprint that worked. That a lot of movie companies have tried to copy and failed mm-hmm. <laughs> miserably. Yeah. We've just talked about the mess that DC has become trying to put all these different formulas together to replicate it. And as soon as they get a little backlash, they stop whatever plans, so it never gets to gather any steam one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's it's just like now. You get stuff like it was no need. No one wanted another Hellboy, and he put out a horrible one. And yeah. it's you know it's going down and, and you know and as one of the biggest tanks of the year. You know because yeah. they put so much money in it. And I and when I saw the trailers, I was like, what is it? Because it looked like they copied from what was already done, but then relying heavily on the comic book. But they were like yeah. they 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 stressed in the beginning before they were filming that it was going to be so different from what came previously. And I'm like. I yeah. don't see it in the trailers and, you know, well, so. and this is important too, because Mike Mignola came out at the, they were interviewing Mignola before around the time of that movie. And they said, what kind of involvement did you have behind the scenes talking to the director or talking to the screenwriters? And he was like, no one talked to me about anything. And I feel like that's not a good idea because I know Gil- Guillermo del Toro really respected Mike Mignola. And I think he mm-hmm. brought him in. Maybe he brought him in too much. I don't know. I'm not to say one way or the other, but I think that when you go from, Having uh, this very strong loyalty to the comics, which I think most comic book movies need to have some loyalty to the comics. Warner Brothers, pay attention to me. You Don't be ashamed of your heroes. Your heroes do not need to be changed, broken, and turned into something else. You need to be respecting those comic book roots. Uh, but the whole thing, like I read an interview with Mignola, and it really put an even further bad taste in my mouth. Because I'm like, this is the guy that created Hellboy. Maybe just at least as a service bring him in to 
to oversee kind of what you've got going on. But that tells me that they weren't interested in that aspect of it. And I think that's one of the things that we find ourselves looking at now is more and more of these films. Um, I, I don't know. The premise of this video is are there too many comic book movies? I don't know if there's too many, but there's more than there should be that don't feel like comic book movies and that are kind of straying way too far from – uh, from what it needs to be to actually be a comic book movie. We have decades and decades and decades of source material lined out behind us that show the trajectories of these characters, that show who these characters are. Look, I'm going to be honest. This is going to be super controversial. The upcoming Joker movie with, with, with Joaquin Phoenix, I think, is abysmal. Now, I haven't seen the movie, of course, but the trailer, right. like it, it bothers me so right. much because I'm like, no, that's not the Joker. We have... Like 75 years. I, th I think we're coming up on 80 years now. No, 80, it is 80 because Batman just right. turned 80. And he's been 80, there. Right. 80, 80 freaking years of the Joker. And instead of telling a proper Joker story that you still haven't gotten right in one of these modern films, even arguably even the Batman 1989 tries to reinvent the Joker right. uh, with all this Jack Napier stuff. You ever dance? It's, it's got great lines, right. but it's not necessarily the Joker. And they keep trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm like, no, no, the wheel already exists. Just, just show what we got. So they're, they're so like, I'm getting hot. I got to settle down. It just, it just feels too far from like, they're trying to, to reinvent the wheel. And they don't need to. I, I agree. Uh, it, it, and it's one of those, it's those balancing acts. And I feel like what you're saying, it is too many in the way of the, the people that are involved in the movies. And like you said, the um, and how they handle the source material. I feel like Marvel does a pretty good job. And they don't yes. do everything right, but they, they are respectful. I remember when they were shooting Infinity War, Kevin Feige took a picture and it ended up being on the um, internet where he had a super huge omnibus of Infinity War, and he had all these um, these like um, tabs marked off yes. in it, and where he had notes and, and annotated it on things they wanted to pull out. He didn't open it, of course, because I guess he didn't want to spoil anything. But you uh -huh. just saw all these multicolored tabs from the uh -huh. top, the side of things he had this earmarked, and it was like a huge like where they. I think it was like I don't know if it was a actual omnibus or something that he had bought it together that he just had all the source material they were using for the movie and just had the things earmarked. Yeah. And, I, you know, I was like, that's respect, and he loves comics, so you can understand that and how these movies are put out. You know, I do you do you have that same thing with um, with DC Films? Do you have something like with, you know, um, with the company that did Hellboy? You know, you got to think about certain times, too, with studios, with especially like we talk about Fox and where they kind of went wrong, like Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. where that last movie they rushed out so they could make retain the license rights. So they yes. just threw out a movie and they meddled in it and they ruined what Josh Trank was going to do, but they just wanted to get it out to hold rights, to yeah. retain those rights. So was that a similar thing with that Hellboy movie or was it something different? Because it just seemed like it was pushed out with not a lot of thought, not the yeah. creator wasn't involved, and it ended up being. Hot garbage that nobody yeah. needs to see, you know. So it's I think it's one of those things that I um I like the variety of the movies that are out there, but I want to see more quality. I want to see more diversity in genres and casting, uh, you know, yeah. pushing the envelope in those different ways. So uh, you know, I, I guess when it comes down to it, we're purists and we rather have yeah. uh, quality over quantity any right. day of the week, and that's kind of where I'm at with it. And and it's like I'm more likely now to say no to a comic book movie if it just doesn't look good if it doesn't just catch my interest i'll skip that one yeah. you know or i'll just catch it on home video i was gonna say you'll yeah. skip it but you'll catch it on home you know, video. yeah you'll watch I, it I can't help it i gotta you can't kinda, skip one totally yeah yeah it's like, kind of like now you know I, I wasn't i don't i didn't feel the whole venom thing but now i see it on sale everywhere for like 10 bucks and i'm like well i got the rest of the spider-man movies so you still haven't seen Venom yet? No, I haven't. We I watched haven't. it. We watched it a few nights ago. I picked oh, up the 4K because it got super cheap. Oh it's, yeah. It's it's not necessarily a good movie. If it, it feels like this weird low budget European movie, but it's oh, not. Right. It's not low budget and it's not European. Right. It feels. But when you if you can click into the vibe that it's trying to go for, which is essentially comedy, like it's like a buddy comedy, but it doesn't advertise itself and it makes really weird choices. But if you can get into the zone that it's in, it's actually kind of enjoyable. Gotcha. I don't yeah. know that a lot of it works. I, <laughs> I I can't. I it seems like it was born out of a fever dream, but 
there's even <laughs> there's a post credit scene and I'm like that doesn't work at all but I'm still kind of like oh man I'm still kind of like well it, it's it's weird enough that it kind of uh it's kind of charming in a weird way not good but charming. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean that's I think the put a button on it is is what I, I think is a more of I wish more care was put into the movies and more thought and um you know in that um they don't carry the cachet that it they once have just because there's so many of them but I'm glad that we do have a, a standard bearer at the top of it with Marvel that yes. they they have someone at the head currently and I hope he stays around for a little while longer mm-hmm. that really cares about you know, what he's doing with these films. And not all of them are, you know, grand slams out the park, but they're always consistently enjoyable, I can say at least. And they always, there's always a tie-in. They're they're always influenced directly by a comic or a comic book storyline. So it's not, it's never a one-to-one translation, but you can always go, hey, if you like more Civil War, go read the Civil War book. Hey, if you like the Ant-Man movie, you can go read about Scott Lang and the comics. And it's kind of like, they always even even from the beginning with Iron Man, like, hey, you can go read the Iron Monger storyline from the 70s. Like it's all influenced by actual comics for guys. Like, that's important for guys like us because they're not just making things up whole cloth. It's influenced by the history of these characters. And that's what you're saying. And right. I agree with that completely. Whereas Warner Brothers does not do that. Warner Brothers is completely invested in reinventing these characters for what they think is a modern audience and that's why the Flash TV show, the the TV, the DC TV shows are so successful. Now I, I know Arrow is over now that it just ended, but the other they're so successful. But Warner Brothers is like, yeah, but that's not movies. Like our movies have to be when when movies become. I'm sorry, when comic book movies become big business, it's just going to get messy. And that's where we're at now. Is this right. big we're business. at that precipice. Yeah, we're right at that precipice and we're seeing this getting sloppy. And, and I think yeah. now that Marvel has pulled off with Far From Home getting ready to come out, mm-hmm. 23 successful movie franchises or movies that the pressure's on for everyone to try to catch up. You can't catch up. No. Just stay, find your lane and find your niche and stay yeah. in it. And I, and I thought, I thought that DC coming out of Shazam might have found, you know, their niche. And mm-hmm. it seems like from because it didn't perform the way they wanted, the backlash from it is now they're pivoting yet again, which is what the fourth pivot, fifth, yeah. hundredth at this point, which I'm kind of sad to see because I was feeling I was starting to feel positive again about the direction they were going. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, everything now for me is with Joker, like you, is kind of that just look like a weird thing to me. The mm-hmm. only thing like with Joker that um, what is it? Todd Phillips is directing it. Mm-hmm. Todd Phillips he directed uh, War Dogs, which was advertised as a comedy, but was anything but, and it was a really good movie based on the strength of that. And I know he's mainly known for like the Hangover films and stuff like that, but yeah. it was a very missed uh, represented in. Um, advertised movie and it was mm-hmm. a very and he, he showed some chops with the drama side and so on that the strength of that alone i'm curious about the joker i still don't know if i'll run out and see it right away but yeah. i'm curious about all the strength of that um but again it's like you i'm apprehensive about it where i can i can skip it and catch it later so yeah. you know closing out on that you know it's just like i said it we st- it's still a lot of work to see where things are going to go in this whole jungle of, like you said, the big business of comic book movies. Yeah. I also have to, before this video is over, I have to, to mention hashtag release the Snyder cut because this thing is gaining momentum. Uh, a lot of fans want to see Zack Snyder's cut of justice league that he had assembled the cut before he stepped down because of his personal tragedy. Um, and I, I should mention that because that is something that is, it is seriously growing. It's reaching a national scale, maybe international scale hashtag release the Snyder cut. Um, going back to our conversation about Warner Brothers kind of being reactive and not necessarily proactive. But uh, I, I yes, I agree. And I'm also learning on the Joker front, never trust a trailer. I'm learning never trust a trailer. Always see a movie for yourself to make up your own mind. Um, and I think we will see these movies, but we may not run out and see them on opening night. And that's just been the change that I've noticed over the last 15 years or so. You've, you've experienced that. It just... With the massive amount of comic book movies coming out, they just don't feel quite as special as they used to. Marvel movies always still feel special to me, though. What about I, you? Yeah, I agree. I feel like they, um, 
I was hyped for Captain Marvel. I'm really excited for Far From Home. Like, it's just something about them that they they deliver. You know, like, even the ones that are less, I still enjoy them enough. So I mm-hmm. look forward to going, having that theater experience to go see them. Like, I can't wait to go see Far From Home. It's like, yeah. you know, all the, you know, just the positive vibes and the, 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 the fun of it that it captures in the trailers. The ones like, I want to be a part of that fun. You know, yeah. Like, just yeah. in, in, enjoy the ride. So, yeah, I totally agree with you. I think that's about all we're going to be able to do with this topic today. There's no ending for it. Uh, no. We might might have to revisit it later down the road just to see how we feel then. I keep wondering, is the bubble going to burst? But it never does. I don't think it ever will. I think they're just this is just the new status quo. Exactly. They're they're the new. Uh, it's the new normal now. Like you yeah. know, and they, and they're just they're turning. They're making money for companies, and it, it's all about turning a profit. You know, even though we're fans and we look at it from a fan perspective, they're looking at it from a business money perspective. They are the films that are people are going out in droves to see that make them money. So they're going to keep yeah. putting them out till they don't. Yeah. All right. Well, so tell people where they can find Comic Book Savant. You can find me on YouTube at uh, youtube.com forward slash comic book savant. You can find me uh, on the Internet at comicbooksavant.com. Everything I do as far as the podcast as well as the YouTube channel, all my information is there on the website. And if people want more conversations like this, obviously there's a few on the channel here, but I have done several guest spots on your podcast as well where we talk about things like this long form for like an hour, an hour and a half. Um, we did a prediction about what we think the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to be. We've talked about comic book movies like like the, the Warner Brothers kind of a thing. We've talked about that before, too. So all that is at comicbooksavant.com. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us and, and talking about this topic. It's very uh, maybe controversial, but I'm sure you have a lot to say. So weigh in on the comments below and we will uh, we'll continue this conversation there. So, uh, again, thank you for hanging out with us. We appreciate you. And until next time, we will catch you later.